Hello, we're doing a ray one start one. Start with two integer arrays A and B of any length. Return how many of the arrays have one as their first element. Alright, this one's pretty simple. We're going to keep this constant. Yeah, we're going to basically just return the first ones. If A uh, at index 0 is equal to 1. And let's see, we could do we could do this way. We're gonna do it with tons of logical operators. Okay. I haven't done this before, so I mean, I've oh I've done this before. Oh no, actually, technically, I don't think I've had this problem ever before in my life. But I know how to solve it. Okay. So we're using the Tipperman thing. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a big fan of this. Uh, so what this is, uh, this says that if this condition holds true. That means there's that both arrays have a one in them, and if so, then what we're gonna do is we are going to return the number two. Else, that's basically what this means, right? Else, um, we're gonna we're gonna run the the what you call it. Um, we're gonna check something else. So if a zero. You know what? I don't I don't really like how this is going, but we're gonna continue. I think there's a simpler way to do it. Uh but this seems this looks cool. Alright. And then this one's equal to equal to zero. No, we'll do an or statement here. Okay. So if either one is equal to one then we're just going to return 1 right else that means that one or the other does, is not equal to 1 so then we just return 0 and I think this should work now, it seems like it doesn't work because you get an index out of bounds here on uh, the empty arrays you see okay so this doesn't work if we do not have, if we have a uh, any empty arrays. So we have to check to see that if the length of A and the length of B are greater than zero. So, if uh, both are greater than zero, then this works. Otherwise, what we could do is, um, uh, we'll create it like a counter or something, right? Uh, or should, you know, we'll just do the same way we did it. Because um, at this point, we just have to check. Um, oh, okay. So, like, say the, the length of it. The length of A is equal to zero, and the length of B is equal to zero. Then we just return zero. Okay. All right. So this takes care of all the exceptions. So I'm all over the place. This is like how I code usually. When I'm freestyling it, of course. Um, otherwise, here we we could naturally no, yeah that takes care of everything, right? If I'm not mistaken, let's check. I'm missing a return statement. Um, does this take care of everything? What if I do? No, this doesn't take care of everything. No, it doesn't. Okay, so. Alright, we're gonna have an else here. So, cause like it could be that. So this one says that they're both equal to zero. That means the length. That means they're both empty. So at that point we can't count anything, right? So we just return zero. But now let's say one of the others just is uh say one's empty and the other is not empty. 
then in that case we just have to check to see if we have to check the other right so say if a dot length is equal to is equal to zero then in that case what we're, we're going to do is we're going to check to see if if b zero is equivalent to one and if so we return one at that point otherwise we return zero okay so that and the kicks that a is empty so now let's check if b is empty so what we can do is return because this is the last condition here i believe we don't need to have an if statement we just hold it as if b length is equal to zero or no no oh, we're gonna check to see if a zero is equal to one and if so we uh, return one, otherwise we return zero. Let me just put my parentheses and let's, let's cross our fingers and see if it works. And it does work. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section and or shoot me an email.